Guys, I'm so blessed to have the man to the left of me today because not only has he been someone that I've been watching and listening to for a very long time, but my man drove in from the nation's, nation's capital. Flew in. Yeah. Flew in <laughs> from the I'm, nation's I'm not, capital. I'm, I'm not going to waste four hours. You know, I we got to be productive. I, I know. <laughs> like... I feel so grateful for that. My guest today is Alfonso, and I'm not going to butcher this, Alfonso Quadra. Bam. Okay, I it. knew it. You know, <laughs> I'm East Indian descent, so we, we, yeah, we do yeah. a lot of the rolling of the tongues and yeah, stuff for yeah, names. Yeah, yeah. But Alfonso, for, for the, you know, some of our listeners and viewers that don't know you, buddy, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Man, that's a long... How long do we have? No. <laughs> <laughs> We'll um, give them the Reader's the, Digest know, yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you the Reader's Digest. I was on Reader's Digest, by the way. <laughs> oh, <come on>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Um, first, of, first and foremost, um, I guess I'm a, I'm a teacher, right? I, I, I want to teach the, the world, change lives, help people um, just get it, right? I've been getting it for, for a while, been mm-hmm. getting it. Um, since I was uh, 17, I started a company. Yeah. And uh, it was a clothing company. By the time I was 20 years old, that company was Canada wide Sick. and uh, got into real estate Yeah, and uh, never looked back. What took you into real estate at that age, man? Well, <clears throat> um, sometimes I'll, I'll, I like to say that it's an embarrassing story Yeah, because at 21 year old, I pretty much had figured things out on financially, had a, you know, it's, I made it. Right. Right. And uh, give a 21-year-old all this money, what's he going to do? So, oh, he's going to find ways to spend it, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that, was, so that was me. You know, I had the consumer mindset, right? Um, you, do you remember the spinning rims? Yes, for sure. <laughs> I was 20, a huge fan of Dayton's. Yes, that's yes. My, like my, one of my favorite set of rims were yeah, Dayton's, man. Yeah, and uh, not so much of an investment. Okay. And so, yeah, I pretty much uh, almost uh, spent all the money. Sure. And uh, almost went bankrupt. And what I discovered was that when you're in business, you're very vulnerable, right? You're vulnerable to the economy. You're vulnerable to, to everything else. And so when I restarted, uh, my, you know, I came back. Uh, I actually moved to Miami. That's another story. Mm. But uh, I came back and re- to rebuild my company, w- which was in shambles. Mm. Um, I had a different mindset, right? Okay. And uh, now I had the investor mindset. I read a couple books, Think and Grow Rich. This is in my early 20s, right? Surprised that you got, like, that book is, you know, one of my favorite books of all time. It's crazy. It was given to me by my mentor okay. in Miami. And uh, this guy was wealthy. I mean, you know. He really got it. Yeah. I mean, he, if you were walking to walk into someone's house and you're like, oh, my God, is this marble? <laughs> right? You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're like, you're I'm a real estate agent. I do that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. you know, or, or you're, you're on someone's boat. The guy has a yacht. <laughs> Right, and you're 21 at yeah, this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, 22, 23. Very easily impressionable. And, yeah, right? and uh, I thought I had made it, but I hadn't. Right, I was I was a consumer, and uh, anybody. I mean, if you Google people that win the lottery, mm-hmm. uh, what do you get? People, you know, that lose everything in three, four years. What do they, what do they say? Like, I think 90 percent of people who win the lottery will go yeah. bankrupt yeah. in 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 the next three years of winning yeah. it yeah. and it probably comes back to exactly what you said right they just don't have the mindset yeah that's it of how that's to hold it they know yeah. they got it so quickly M- making money is easy that yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that I'm right so now glad you, said you, that. you you can stand on the street corner uh, if you have two arms you can sell something <laughs> for I sure mean, hopefully it's legal yes but uh, <laughs> but disclaimer what, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh you know you can sell anything. Uh, anything can be sold. Water. I mean, uh, look at all the different businesses that we have here. Someone has made money from all of these things. I know. So actually, it's so funny, man. Like I, I've had so many guests here, and we've never really brought that up. Like, there's so much you can sell just in they, this look, room. Look around you. I <laughs> yeah. mean, this phone yeah. was the biggest selling phone in 1939, right? Well, <laughs> shout out to to our executive producer and co-host Laura. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She found this somewhere, I think, on Amazon. Was it Laura? Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. On Amazon. Yeah, yeah. What did you pay for this thing? Well, it, that's a fake. Well, I, no, I get it. No, I know, yeah, but yeah. but it's vintage. But you bought it. I did. Yeah, right. And just for that wall. Yeah. Just for that wall, right? Yeah. And so somebody still figured out to to package it well yeah, and sell yeah. it. Well, yeah. they figured that people actually want vintage looking things yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. So what I discovered really quickly, there's a difference between being rich, mm-hmm. having money, yeah. and being wealthy. And being wealthy comes down to the mindset. Are you an investor, right? And so in my early twenties, I decided to. Uh, 
continue on the business path of being an entrepreneur. But uh, now the money that I was going to make from from that, I was going to pour it into a vehicle that was bulletproof, recession proof. And so uh, that's what I did. You know, I started buying uh, about a, a, a tri- I started with a triplex mm-hmm. then went on to four units, five units. Uh, six units, uh, 15 units, 20 units, 25 units. And uh, yeah, we, we, we control about uh, 500 units now. So right now you're at 500 units. Yeah, that's, yeah. Fantastic. that's what we control. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Under contract, um, yeah. I know because we're talking off air and I hope you're okay to share it. At a time you were homeless, man. Yeah. You want to yeah. talk a little yeah. bit about that? Like yeah, I'm very curious uh, that, to even hear back. more. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going back to when I was 15 years old now. Mm-hmm. Um, we're... Uh, I don't know when are you uh, are you Canadian? Like yeah, I'm born, born and raised here. Born, born and raised here. Uh, in, you're you're in from? Toronto. I'm from. Uh, my, my my parents are from Punjab in India. Okay. Yeah. So, so they, they came, came immigrants. Seventy three. Yeah. Yeah. So I so so we came. We we had the same path. We came in the eighties because of a war happening uh, in Latin America, which uh, in which Central exactly? America, El Salvador. Oh yeah. Okay. My right? friends from El Salvador. Yeah. yeah. And so wars happening. People came, and. Um, you know, for me, it was it was uh, it's a bit different because my mom was actually involved in in politics. She was a journalist. Okay. And um, you know, speaking about what's happening. Was it like mid eighties around this time. I'm well, this would be in the seventies. In the seventies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she was actually illegally detained uh, and brought to prison, and, and as a result, they had to keep me in hiding. Right, my grandparents. So I was not allowed outside. I was not allowed uh, inter- to interact with other kids. And um, it was serious. It was a serious uh, time in our For lives. Sure. Yeah. And so uh, thanks to some NGOs, some other uh, agencies, government agencies, Government of Canada, um, my mom was freed. Okay. And uh, we're given asylum to come to, to Canada, right? And so we'd been moving around so much and, um, you know, I had missed a lot of educational opportunities. And so for me, school was a bit tough. Like the integration of school was mm-hmm. tough. And uh, you know what? They never teach anything. They never taught anything that I that I was interested in in school. It's funny how much time yeah. they spend on I know, calculus yeah. and algebra. Yeah, and no, all. you know what? I was I, bored. I, I was I, I was actually an entrepreneur. Right. Right. I was. Well, I was a get, that was yeah, yeah. Like I was trying to make uh, figure out how to make money. Right. Right. And uh, I, I remember having a paper route yeah. at twelve years old, and uh, subcontracting my paper route. To another kid, Hello. right? And then I had a second paper route. So I had, started, I had a mini enterprise, Dude, right? Dude, it's why we're like kindred <laughs> souls in that sense. Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you because yeah. that was me. Yeah. That was me. Like the teacher's telling me that you're not going to be able to, 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 to amount to anything. And here on the weekends, I'm delivering papers and making money. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like I yeah, yeah. kind of felt like, what are you guys going to really teach me? I, I mean, I probably didn't know it at that time. Yeah. Now thinking back, yeah, it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. I knew this was going to be my play. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, Something yeah. along these lines. Right. Yeah. Uh, so go on. So now, now, so, now. So now, so I'm, I'm frustrated at 15. I, uh, I end up dropping out of high school. Okay. And because of some conflict at home, um, I also left home. Mm-hmm. And now I'm 15 years old, completely on my own in Ottawa. And uh, had some dark moments, panhandling for change, uh, sleeping in banks, and just uh, had a rough time, right? But, you know, we've all had dark moments. I mean, right. my, you know, my dark moment might not be as dark as someone else's. Or, right. you know, maybe someone would say, oh, my God, that's crazy. How yeah. did you do it? But we've all had that moment in our lives when we said to ourselves, like, why me? Right, um, I did have a life-changing moment mm-hmm. at 17. Okay, I became a father. Ah, yeah, yeah, and uh, that moment changed my entire life. I'm sure it did. I looked at this little girl named Ritalia. Yes, she's 23 now. Very pretty. I see her on your yeah, Instagram and go- stuff like that. I mean, yeah. she's gorgeous. Uh, smart, mm-hmm. smart, and uh, also getting into real estate. But uh, yeah, I looked 17's at th- young, man. That's tough. Yeah, so what's going yeah. on in your head? Like, I, I, I want to <laughs> go into your head a little bit, like. You, you hold this baby and, and yeah. Yeah, you're so not s- stable at all, obviously. I have, I have nothing. I have nothing. And uh, I'll tell you, my dad left okay. when I was uh, two years old during the war. And so I didn't want to repeat it. I didn't know what being a father was because I never had a father. My mom was my father and my mother. And so for me, it, it, it came down to just stepping up, whatever it meant. I had no clue what it meant what it meant and it wasn't until they put this little girl in my arms that everything changed right and so I remember even to the day 
um, I looked at myself into the mirror and I said, Alfonso, you got to change, buddy. You got to change. And so at that moment, I found purpose. Mm-hmm. Right, and you know how powerful purpose can oh, be, like having that your why. why. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be, you know. And that at seventeen to have discovered that that can be powerful. And I always, I, I always tell her, like she's like my guardian angel. You know? Right, and she came and she saved me because I was, I was headed the other way. And so, at the end of the day, I wanted her to be proud of me. That okay. was my why. I wanted my daughter to say, my dad owns the building, not my dad cleans the building or incarcerated in the building. Because that's where I was headed, right? For sure. <laughs> well, I love it because yeah. how many people say that to themselves, right? Even yeah. in that situation, Alfonso, that I want to make a change. I want to do something different. You know, for you to have taken the action and done it, like, like just kudos to you, man. Yeah, and a yeah, huge yeah. congrats. Like, not a lot of people take that step to actually yeah, do it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, with, you know, again, we we're talking off air. You now speak in front of thousands upon thousands of people a year. Um, bringing this message and as yeah. well as the education on investing into yeah. real estate. Yeah, yeah, What is it sometimes that you just, like, what is it why people don't take that action? Why don't they take that plunge? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. When I, you know, I, I was motivated. My, I, have, I have a daughter. I got a job, right? And because that's the only thing I knew how to do. Like, you're supposed to get a job now. Was it instant? Like, like born had, and you, like, within days, weeks? Kind I of had thing? a job. Yeah, see? Right? I had a job. And so... It's that it's speed, isn't it? No, like but you did it really quickly. Yeah, it, because that's what I thought it was. You're supposed to do right. get a job, okay. yeah. right? I yeah. was. That's been ingrained. Like you got to get a job. Got to get a job. And so that's what I did. I went back to school. Okay. Got a job. Mm-hmm. I was a dishwasher. Okay. Five dollars an hour, right? So now you can kind of sense my age. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a while ago, but uh, doesn't show though. Yeah. Dude, I'm not just so now that, you're, right? you're sitting. I'm sitting there washing dishes. Right. And it's hard. Like you want to give up. <laughs> Right, you know, you know it, yeah, well, now I got to go to school. Right. I'm going to school full time. And then afterwards, I got to go to this job, right, where like cleanups in, uh, guess who gets the cleanup when it comes to the restaurant? Yeah. The dishwasher. The dishwasher, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, in the bathrooms, I don't know what kind of people, they wouldn't do this at home. Right. Like right. the kind of messes that you see. Sure. And I'm like, man, I don't want to do this, but I had to keep myself motivated. So I went to the break room and I would, uh, every day I would take a, a piece of paper and I would write down all my goals and dreams, everything that I wanted to achieve in my entire life. And so I think that, you know, going back to your question, like why is not that people don't, uh, uh, don't pursue it or don't go any further with it. They don't bother writing it down. Right. And it has to I be like real that. for you. Right. Yeah. And, um, and you know, being motivated, uh, I just I knew that I had to get a uh, not not just get a job, but I had to create a, some sort of hustle. So <clears throat> I would come down to Toronto, New York City. Mm. I'd buy mixtapes, mm. uh, jeans, and T-shirts, and I would sell them from my locker in school. So it wasn't the five dollars that dated you? I think it, it was the mixtapes that did. Yeah, I love it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I discovered something powerful. Right. The difference between profit and yes. wages. Right. The problem is. You know, people will go to a workshop, they would go, they're going to go watch Gary Vee, they're going to, you know, and they're going to go back to their old life where society pushes you to pursue wages. They want you to pursue a job, right? And we know that if you look at all the top uh, millionaires, billionaires of the world, they don't have a job. Mm -hmm. They pursue, they get paid on performance, profits. Right, so there's a big difference between me exchanging one hour of my time yes. for five dollars, and going out and uh, selling a pair of jeans that I bought for twenty for sixty dollars, making a forty dollar profit. I discovered at seventeen years old that's all I wanted to do with my time is right. is pursue profit and somewhat at that age at least living kind of your passion because you said you figured it out for yourself that yeah. hey I want to do something that also excites me and, yeah. and makes yeah. you happy yeah. right yeah. And, well, I, I knew, um, I mean, this is in the hip-hop ni- in the 90s, right? Yeah. This is like the, the golden era of For hip-hop. Sure. And that's how I started um, selling mixtapes and, and things that I was interested in. You well, should be interested Just on a side in, note, who's your artist and stuff like that? Like, who's your, who's your go-to? Yeah, okay. Like, I'm more <laughs> Come of a two, on, man. I'm, I'm a little bit more of a Tupac yeah, guy, yeah, but I love Biggie. I'm, like, I'm more of a fucking yeah. just telling you. It's the truth. A little no, bit but, more on the west side there. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but uh, <laughs> you know, Biggie. Yeah. Biggie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't, uh, 
can't, there's well, nothing well, I can say. You're yeah. not, it's not like you know, you're not choosing a big name there. That, that, yeah. That's an important name in history, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, at the end of the day, it should be something... Uh, you should be. It should be something that you're interested in, right? Because you, you then you can, at the very beginning, when you step into being an entrepreneur, you're not going to know much, right? Unless you got an MBA, but uh, even even then, you still don't have the 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 practical right uh, application of it. So, it should be something that you're interested in if you want to be in business, not just for the sake of being in business. So, because I was really interested in that culture. I was very successful, and I could make a lot of mistakes and recover quickly, right? Oh, that's important. Yeah. That's a new one, right? Because, yeah. You, yeah, you made some mistakes, but you knew you could recover quickly because it's something that you kind of yeah. were able to do yeah. in your sleep, so to speak, right? And again, to go back to $5 an hour, hmm. um, it, it just wasn't going to happen, right? I mean... You knew it, that in your gut anyways, it, it, right? It wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to make it happen that way. So, so it was a little bit of a pit stop. I, I, um, I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, 19, with a vision, a dream, and an idea of opening my very own store, right? And uh, people said I was crazy, there's a recession, there's uh, all kinds of things that people like to say, right? What are you right? doing, Alfonso? Yeah, You're crazy. You have no this money. Is, yeah, like, you have no credit. Come on. You have no business education. Right. You need to have a business degree. All the roadblocks that people put in front of themselves. And so uh, I, I changed my approach. And so if you... If you want to be successful, you got to change your approach. Pivot. No, I'll give you an example. Okay. People always ask, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Right? That means you're not confident in what you're doing. Now, now you're giving the power to someone else to tell you, well, you know what? There's a recession right now. They're going to give you the excuses why they didn't do it. Right? And why they're scared. Exactly. So I always tell people, change your approach. And so instead of asking people if I should open a business, mm -hmm. I, start, I started telling people I'm opening a business September 1st. Now, I don't have a location. I don't have money. I don't have anything. But I, I put it in my mind. September 1st was the, was the day. And then so people, guess what people started saying? <laughs> Yo, can I invest a little some sum? <laughs> right? How can I get in? Yeah, me? yeah. Now, people said, thought I was crazy. Right. But I, I raised uh, 2700 bucks. Okay. And uh, I took and I opened September 1st with $2,700, none of my own money, my first right. JV. Right. Right. <laughs> you didn't even know you were doing a JV. Yeah. Like, it, it just, it was just, it, happened, I just made right? it you, because you know what? I changed the approach. <laughs> right. Right. I'm doing this. Right. When you're doing it, things will start to happen. When you start questioning yourself, when you start saying, well, maybe should I do this or I'll wait for the right time? There is no right time. That was the time to strike. No, this uh, well, is interesting. I'll make a, a long story short. No, I, I love took it. The, I love the it. $2,700 and yeah. it turned into a. Uh, cha a chain of stores across the country from Vancouver to, to Saskatchewan to, you know, uh, all over Ontario, Quebec. And uh, we were the number one urban store in Canada. Which store was that? It's called Rugged Culture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, you're living your passion at this time. Stores doing very, very well. When you started to expand, what I'm very curious about now, um, <laughs> did people, did the naysayers, naysayers start to change their at that attitude, point, at, man? At, at, at that point, there was more, even more naysayers. Now you got the bank, you got the suppliers. You know, I was a kid, right? I was 20 years old, 21 years old. I would walk into the, the bank, the bank, and people <laughs> would say, like, what is happening here, Who right? Are you kid? And yeah. so, I was determined. You got to be determined. <laughs> If you talk to any entrepreneur mm -hmm. and the, 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 you ask them, like, what was it? What was the one thing that got you to the next level? Um, some might say luck, uh, which I don't really believe in luck. Mm -hmm. uh, some might say it was a little bit of, you know, like um, being in the right place at the right time. But mo the majority of them are going to say they were determined. Determination. you got to be determined. You cannot take no for an answer. Because you're going to hear so many no's along the way. Like, yeah. I, I've heard it my whole life. I still yeah. hear it till this day. Uh, you know, we have a mutual uh, uh, friend that passed away. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and when that happened, everyone said it's probably time for you to stop doing what you're doing because yeah. he yeah. was the, the, the glue that held yeah. everything together. Yeah. But myself and my partner, Simeon, we, we you know, uh, put on the boots and started to grow the team. The team has grown, grown stronger um, and everyone was saying you shouldn't be doing this. This is yeah, this yeah. is your time to quit now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. damn, did that ever propel us to another stage, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 
So stores closed down. You know, we we, we spoke about um, obviously going bankrupt. No, um, I didn't go bankrupt. Almost, yeah, almost. almost went, I almost went bankrupt, but uh, luckily, it, it, I was on my way down. Um, I mean, I was uh, massively in debt, and um, the accountants said you got to go bankrupt. Um, again, I don't accept no for an answer, right? I'm not going to uh, give up. And my mom did teach me certain things. Uh, my mom wasn't an entrepreneur. She mm-hmm. didn't teach me how to um, be, be, be an entrepreneur, but she taught me integrity. And uh, old school, like if you borrow uh, $1, you better... You better pay that back. You better pay that back yeah. before it's yes. due. Yes, it's my mom. Habit. My yeah. mom, and by the way, now that I have tenants all across Canada... I wish some of the tenants were like my yeah. mom. My mom paid her rent, not on the 1st, on the 25th. I love it. My, the rent was there, right? Yeah, yeah. Just in case. You're right. In right? case something happens, the yeah, bank's closed, who knows, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So my mom has always <laughs> taught me that, that right. integrity part. And so, you know, when I was uh, faced with this bankruptcy, I said, because I didn't, to be honest with you, I mean, I was, in, I was 23, 24, and someone said bankrupt. I didn't really know what that meant. Right. Like, what does it mean? And he says, well, people stop calling you. (laughs) (laughs) Right? All these people harassing you now. It's over. Yeah, yeah. And I said, easy way out. Yeah, easy. I mean, and people can, by the way, uh, even you can be bankrupt and still crawl out of it and and go to the next level or whatever. But you're going to be poisoned to a lot of people. Right, that's going to be a, a huge stigma, right? Yeah, that's going to be huge. I didn't know, and it was, that wasn't the reason I didn't go bank. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't go bankrupt. Um, the reason was because I made a commitment, and I didn't want to be the guy that made the commitment. By the way, I did. It was my fault, right? I misspent the money. I mismanaged the money, and I had to own it, right? Uh, I don't know if you ever been on a on a diet. Yeah, here and there, man. I, yeah. I'm not good with those things. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you know, I'll go on a, I'll go on a, I'll go on a trip and I'll gain like 15 pounds. <laughs> like sure. I'll go to, an, you know, you're in a resort, four square meals a day, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so, and so, uh, you know, you get back and you yeah. gain all this weight, and now I have to be tough on myself. Yeah, I know. Like now you're only, you know, eating peanuts and water. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. That's no. what you get, right? <laughs> And so, it's and so, so funny what we do in ourselves. Yeah, right? so I had, I, I was like, you know what? Um, this is my financial diet, right? I was gonna, I was gonna rebuild my company, right? Uh, using the things that my mentor taught me in Miami, uh, the new books, the new mindset, and uh, I was gonna rebuild. But this time, I was gonna be very much focused on taking the income I could produce and putting it into into a into an asset that was indestructible. Obviously, that being real estate. Yeah, yeah. And then how did the uh, speaking career start? So the speaking career came as a result of the Reader's Digest. Okay. Right? Uh, you might enjoy this story. But, uh, you know, I built this company. I was a kid, right? Yeah. And so Reader's Digest came, and they, they, they said, we want to do a story on you. And uh, I thought it was going to be a little, you know, in the back of the book, you get these little little, little, little vignettes, little yeah, yeah, stories, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, I thought yeah, it didn't yeah. be. No, it turned out to be a seven-page profile. Wow. That went to 15 different countries, translated in five different languages. And, um, I mean, people were calling, right? And they would say, yeah, you know, Alfonso, why don't you come and give a talk here to the, you know, group of people or whatever. And it was an opportunity at that point. I was uh, still in my 20s to bring my, my business to the, to the next level. But I said, well, I'm not educated, right? All these things in your mind, Self-doubt. right? Yeah. Um, I have an accent, right? I missed a huge opportunities. Okay. I mean, there was an, you know, there's a, there's a time where you need to maximize, maximize on the momentum and you t- got to take advantage, mm-hmm. right? I always say that it's when, if you get, you know, knocked off the horse, it's tough. It's a lot, like it's tough to get back on the horse. Yeah, yeah. Ride that wave when you're on the horse, right? Yeah, yeah. And, so, then, and then make, do more. Yes, go right? faster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People want to slow down. Yes. They get into con- conservation mode, right? Yes. And that's where I was. It's like, oh, like I finally, my company's doing well. Like yeah. I got all these properties. Right. Like I'm, now I'm on conservation mode. Like yes. now I got to conserve, right? And so uh, we contract. Right. Right. And so I said, no, I can't do this. It's going to be my year of yes, my year of yes. And so, uh, sure enough, someone calls me. They're like, oh, we had a, uh, a speaker. Yeah. He backed out. 
and we need another uh, entrepreneur. Can you speak? And remember, I just promised myself, right? Yeah, so year of yes. Yes, yeah, year of yes. So I said, okay, I'll do it. But how many people? And she said, um, 42. 42 people. I said, okay. Uh, when? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's good, right? It doesn't give you that much time to, to back out now, yeah. right? Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was in a, uh, and actually the, the, the event happened to be in a, in a cathedral, but they were just using one of the venues in the cathedral. So mm -hmm. I show up and then boom, this lady comes up to me. She goes, slight change of plans. More people than we thought. Uh, and we have to move it into ca the cathedral. And it's not 42 people, it's 400 people. Just, right? a, just a slight difference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then now I'm like, oh, boy. Like, oh, no, no, I can't do this. And, you know, you go through. The mind will start to create excuses. And, and uh, everything happens so fast. And all of a sudden now I'm on stage. Right? And I'm just sweating buckets. Right? I'm just sweating. There's a video of this somewhere. Oh, is there? Yeah. I will not let it out. <laughs> okay. But uh, like, there's a point where I did this. You're about to tell my video. Yeah, no, no, don't find that off. video. No. <laughs> But there's points I did that I was I had this and it's like you know like the, yeah, the yeah, sweat stain. Sweat to stain. Oh yeah. man! And I remember thinking like, this is horrible. Why would people do this? Right? It's yeah. horrible. And so I had some sort of a talk prepared, <laughs> but there was there was moments that uh, I completely blanked out. Like what? my mind just went blank, and I and I just did this. Oh, while you're up there. Yeah. I thought you were going to go down the path that you went into a zone. And no, go, oh, no. My, my, my mind went blank. <laughs> and then like, I finally will remember what to say, and then I continue saying yeah. it, and then I will go blank again. And then I will do this. Right? This is yeah, hilarious yeah. to me because the viewers don't know and the listeners don't know. Like, I've seen you speak, yeah, man. Like, yeah. you're awesome yeah. to see, right? It, and that's it's, hilarious. So, so, yeah, so I was going blank. <laughs> and in my mind, and we have the self-talk, right? Right. This is horrible. This is the worst experience of my life. I can't wait for this to be over. And I'll never do this again. Like, I will never do this again. So finally, the thing is over. Oh, my God. And I said, I'm going to make a quick exit here. <laughs> Nobody. I'm going to dart yeah, out of I don't, here. Yeah, I don't care about any of these people. And before I could leave, this lady sees me from across the room. And she's running for me. Right? And I'm like, I didn't think I was that bad, right? <laughs> and she, she stops like right here, like as, 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 close, as yeah. yeah. And she gets closer and she's bawling. She's crying. And she's like, Your story changed my life. Your your use of pauses were incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that strategy, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I, I said, well, I guess it really doesn't matter the ums or ahs or whatever. Uh, I guess what matters is the message. Right. Right. It, it, right. You can mess, totally mess up, and if you have something that is genuine, and that it it, it, it could uh, translate and get people to do something with their lives, um, you be you can become an excellent speaker. Right. You, as you mentioned, I mean, you're, you're in control of 500 properties now, right? Yeah. Um, what has that brought to you, man? What has that brought to your life now? Real estate, essentially. Well, real estate, and by the way, my, my personal goal is to get to 7,500. Okay. Why 7,500? It's an oddball number. Yeah, it's, it, you know, I like oddball numbers. I love it. Love <laughs> it. Great. I need to be chasing something. Yes. Right? I need to be pursuing something. Yes. And I remember I said one day I want to have, you know, 10 doors. Right. And then when you get there, you're like, oh, my God, like the problem is we never set. And by the way, someone would say when I say seventy five hundred, it scares some people. Mm -hmm. But to the big dogs, that's nothing. No. Right. No. And yeah. when I get there, I'm sure I'm going to say, well, why did I set it so low? Right. And so the problem is not the, the fact that we set goals is the fact that we set goals based on where we think we, we, what we can achieve. So yep. the, 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 the perspective of where we're setting the goal, we're setting goals too small. Uh, the, Tony Robbins says it, says it the best. He says that we overestimate what we can do in a year, but we underestimate what we can do in five to seven years. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Because our brain just doesn't allow us to think that big sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. And we don't have the patience 
to to be willing to to work through and and get to seventy five hundred doors. So that's yeah. awesome. So, so awesome. seventy five hundred after that is going to be seventy five thousand. Oh, you better believe it. I, I, I have no <laughs> doubt you're going to do it. I have no so doubt you're going to do it. It's been said here. Yes, <laughs> it's recorded and you yeah, guys saw yeah, it. Yeah, I gotta you know so I gotta you know I, I gotta live up to it, right? Right. Uh, but the, uh, back to your question, what has it done for me? Um, it's given me freedom to do what I love to do. And uh, my passion is, as you know, changing lives, right? Mm -hmm. Through stories, through my personal experience, and getting people to get out of their own heads and um, just take a leap of faith and do it because yeah. life is too short to be, to be living be, you know, below your, 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 uh, your capabilities. We're also capable of so much. We're, we're, everybody here is, is uh, living below their potential. Yes. You know you are. Yes. I am. Yep. Uh, the, you know, everybody here is. And so if we can all live up to our potential, we would have an amazing world. I mean, we wouldn't be thinking about going to Mars. We <laughs> already would be in Mars, Mars and whatever <laughs> else that we yeah. didn't see before, right? For sure. It, it just takes one guy that I can go there. And then now he's he's making it a, a mission, because if it's a mission, that is someone that can that cannot be stopped. I right couldn't agree with you more. Man. And so the problem is our, our uh, we we limit our potential and and we we're living below our 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 potential and what we can accomplish. I think I know how you'll answer this, but because I said you know we're very like we're we're kindred souls in that sense. Do you believe that it's what's in between the ears that stops the majority of people? 100%. Yeah. You know, 100%. You asked the question, 7,500 doors um, s might seem like a lot, but it's not, right? Um, that is a limitation that I put on myself. I, I have to set a benchmark, a metric, but why not 75,000 from the very beginning, right? Yeah. But it's, it's uh, it, you know, we are limited by our experiences, mm -hmm. our memories, our paradigms. Uh, the influences of other people and we, you know, cause you, you, you know, and, and the problem is now we're living in a world where the information is so accessible. People don't know what to do. Yeah. It's too much information it, yeah. overload. Yeah. You, people spent like w uh, one guy, I, I talked to him. He, he said, I can't even remember. I can't even regurgitate the amount of hours he spent watching uh, seminars. Hmm. And so what did you do is the question. And so, well, no, I didn't do anything yet. I'm just getting ready. But I have this new seminar that's going to tell me how to, what to do. Seminar junkies, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So to speak. And, and, so, and so this is where people get into trouble, right? With real estate, with anything, is they, they start overthinking. And uh, you just got to go and do it. About two months ago, I think the best compliment I got, and I shared it with my team, was uh, a gentleman came into our office and said, I stopped listening to your podcast because I heard the one that there was a lady who bought, you know, from zero to 11 property. She went in like a two year period. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, I stopped, I called her and they bought one together, did a joint venture. He goes, I don't really need to hear any more podcasts. I was like, that is the best yeah. compliment I could get yeah. because yeah, you don't need to listen to more. Yeah. We're here to provide the information, but it really is just picking up and doing it. Well, if it, someone else has done it before, yeah, you can yeah, do it too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's uh, like a like a psychiatrist, right? Right. Like they're not they're not there to fix you, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm sure I'm going to get some sort of hate mail from some psychiatrists, <laughs> right. but they're there to keep you going, right? right. And uh, maybe some psychiatrists are not that way, but right. it, it, you've never heard it, I, I never heard it where someone says, "I'm cured." Right, I'm cured, and I don't long, no longer have to see my psychiatrist anymore. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it just becomes this thing that people just need to become attached to whatever, and they get it's re repetitive. They go from this workshop to that, this webinar to that webinar, this information, this book. You know, what's one book here? Outliers. Mm -hmm. People will say, "Oh, you know what? Great book." You know, this is a great book. Everybody will read a great book and they're like, okay, well, now what? Like, yeah. when you read this book, what are you supposed to do? What Take do you, action. Yeah, but what? Like, it doesn't, right. it, it doesn't, it's not specific. It's like, stop reading more books. Yes. Go out and do something, right? So, and then, but this book is so good, yeah. you recommend it to other people. 
<laughs> right? You're like, yeah, you got to read this book. Well, and there was two people doing nothing, right? <laughs> and it's like it's recommended to more people and more people and more people. So now, now, I know this is not a book to be, it's not an action-taking book. It's, right. it's meant for you to, to have really eloquent um Conversation yes, during the yes. uh, d- during the 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 the, uh, the cocktail parties. Yes, but uh, you know if people if people can get stuck in that rat race of education. Right. Just I gotta know the next thing. I gotta get the next book. I gotta get the next book, and then they don't do anything. And so that is uh, that's what I tell people all the time. Like, yeah, the education is important. You gotta you must get the education, but then you gotta go out and do something. Well, I love the fact that I'm sitting with you because that's definitely not you because of what you've done. You've, mm-hmm. you, you have, you've actually taken a lot of action. What is it that, that excites you? What type of properties excite you now? Because Apartment you buildings. Lot. So is that like... That's the only thing I, I you, do. So what, what's a minimum unit? I will, I'll, I'll, flip you, the you, occasional, uh, I'll flip the occasional property. I saw something that you yeah, just yeah, flipping, yeah. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll flip just, you know, keep my guys employed, keep everything moving forward, you know? Okay. Uh, but it's, I'm not a flipper. Like I'm not doing, like I, I, at one point I was, I mean, I was doing five, 10, eight, 15 deals a, a year. Flipping but, them? Yeah. Okay. But uh, no, I'll, I'll have like a two or three a year or something, you know, if I see something interesting, but right. it's not really my focus. My focus is buy and hold for life. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You're, you're preaching to the choirs. I mean, yeah. our listeners and viewers know that's all we talk about. Yeah. Um, a lot of people get into real estate investing because yeah. of uh, uh, something that their friend did or a yeah. family member did and, and think about it from a flipping perspective. From a guy who's done a lot of flipping, okay, as you mentioned, yeah. and now obviously talks to talks about buy and hold, why are you such a buy and hold guy now? Okay, so at the end of the day, uh, flipping is a great way to raise capital. Okay. But it, it's a job, right? Um, buy hold is where you have, where you find the true wealth. Uh, and and I like the idea um, of, you know, the higher you go in units, the more units you have in a single property, the lower the price. Like economy is a scale, right? Uh, in terms of flipping, like single family homes, like when you talk about what happened in 2008 in the U.S., mm-hmm. people got, got into trouble where people that were holding on to single family homes, people thought, you know, oh, I'm going to flip five properties at a time and then... You know, you get caught up with the emotional part of uh, the economy. Right. Um, apartment building is bulletproof. If the economy is doing bad, people are going to move to apartments. To rent. If, if, the, apart- the, if the economy is doing good, people are going to move to apartments because they can't afford uh, um, homes. Yep. So it's, I think it's, it's uh, I would say, recession friendly. Yes. In, in a sense that, I mean... I've gone through, in 20 years, I've gone through ups and downs of recessions and all kinds of things. And um, the apartment building, it doesn't matter what the value it is of, of the, I'm not selling. Right. right. So I'm buying it based on numbers and it's, it, there's logic and reason behind that. Yeah. There's no emotion, the, the emotion part where it comes to single family homes and flipping. Yeah. Um, that is an emotional purchase. And everybody involved is emotional, but when you're, you know, when I'm buying a 22 unit building, um, we're buying it even at fair market value, but we know that the person at the other side is some, somewhat rational yes. because they bought a 22 unit building. They're also an investor, so they understand what I'm looking for as an investor. So I like that, right? And so my, I guess like my, my niche it would be, you know, anywhere 13 and up. When you say, uh, talking about your niche, it, are you staying like very close to your home? No, uh, not necessarily. Okay. Like we, we, we're looking at stuff in Saskatchewan, Alberta, even now at, out east. Okay. Um, so it doesn't scare you? No. It, I love that's, that. That's the, beauti- the, that's the beautiful, beautiful part about apartment buildings. Right. There's enough income to be able to hire the right people. Like, I didn't get into real estate to plunge toilets, yes. right? I want to do this. Yes. This is what I want to do with my time. Right. I want to inspire people, change lives. And I'm sure if if people had their time back, they would be doing better things with their with their time than plunging toilets. Well, when you buy in the the two Z's and the three Z's in the four Z's. Yeah. There's not enough money there for you to 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 leverage other people to do the work for you. So you end up going in there, plunging toilets. Uh, It happened to me like in my uh, my early 20s, you know, I had all these properties and I'm in there plunging toilets, and then I look up and guess who's looking up at me, yeah. looking down at me? The 15s and the, the 20s. The tenant, the yeah, tenant. Ah, right. 
And so like, who am I working for here, right? Yeah, yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> now so, you're going into apartments that again, I have 20 tenants. I mean, yeah. what do you say to the guys that say, oh my God, tenants are so crazy to yeah, deal I don't, with? I don't, I don't, I don't deal with tenants. Right. Like, we have a property management company mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, we, we manage our own, our own people and, 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 uh, we have an infrastructure in place. You get, you have, I mean, this is where people, people get so caught up with the solarpreneur, uh, mentality that they have to do everything themselves you have to leverage a team and if you don't leverage a team you're back to working right you're back to being self-employed or or having a job right Mm -hmm. where you got to be answering to tenants um you got to be able to create a team my specialty is not in plunging toilets right my specialty is more in the acquisition um what are you looking for when you're when in I'm, terms of acquisition, are you looking for uh, just a big, big, um, uh, uh, 50, uh, 50 would be the top. Okay. 50 to 60 yeah. would be the most. And yeah. then after that, you start uh, competing with REITs. Yes. Um, I will be at that level where I can, I want to be able to acquire 200 at a time. Sure. Right? But they're at that level. Um, it's a REIT, you know, you're competing with REITs where they're paying ridiculous money for, for properties that don't even make sense. I've been in, I've been in at the, at the bargaining table with other people. Right. Where they're, you know, they're pay- overpaying for property. It doesn't make sense. Well, I guess what I was trying to go, go down, like I was going down the point of when in terms of acquisition, like along subway lines, transit lines, when you look oh, at these apartments and cash flow, baby. Okay. Cash flow. That's it. Uh, That's it. It's, Don't let the emotion get involved. It's all about the numbers. You got to have cash flow. I look at the numbers first. Yeah. I will, I'll look at numbers before I even look at the property. Sure. I'll have it under contract before I even go and look at it because I want to make sure that I'm not wasting my time. Right. Time is valuable. Yep. Time is the most valuable thing that we have. For sure. And, um, you know, I don't want to waste time. I mean, everything else in life, there's an abundance of. There's abundance of money, abundance of, of food and air. There's abundance of people. There's abundance of every commodity in life except for time. And so you want to make sure that you are uh, are investing your time in activities that are going to give you the highest return on investment on your time. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of the day, if you are you know, walking every single property, kicking tires is what I call it. Sure. Um, you, you're wasting a lot of, you, you not only are you wasting your time, but you're wasting their time. Right. Um, and you haven't even made an offer. Yeah. Right? You don't even know if this is a property that you can even, you, you can even well, buy. Well, you said that, Alfonso, there's nothing wrong with tying up a property yeah. and then running it through due diligence. Yeah. Like, tie it up. Just yeah. take it off the market so you control it now. That's it. Right? There's a lot of people who, I don't want to put on an offer. I don't want to do this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It doesn't cost person. you anything. It doesn't cost you anything. Right? right? And yeah. just then you do the, I, I'd rather put, put in an offer. Right. I have it under contract. That's it. And then, so this is the other thing. People start negotiating right out of the gate. Right. Right. This, you know, you haven't even, you don't even know what's on the other side. <laughs> yes. You haven't seen the property. How you get, how you start lowballing people <laughs> when you haven't even been to the property? You no, you're just gonna piss people off. Yeah, it just yeah. doesn't make sense. I totally, so, yeah. so, so, uh, like, I guess my strategy is, you know, I, I'll go in there and I'll, I'll, I'll tie it up, mm-hmm. and and then uh, and during the inspection, I'll, I'll make decisions, right? You know, based on numbers and logic and reason and the condition, and. Uh, this is when I, the negotiations start. Well, I love the fact that you 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 still till this day build the team and, and yeah. use the team resources, the the home inspector, the financing person, the, everybody, the, everybody. Yeah, um, you're still open to JVs. Everybody, everything, everything. I'm I'm in a acquisition mode, and, right? And uh, no no man is an island. Yeah, and uh, I'm open to to working with people. I'm, I, you know, in fact, that's the only way I'm going to get to seventy five thousand doors. I love it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, you know, using all my own money. It's going right. to take a long time. And so if I want to get to 75,000 doors, I need to be be in a position where I can open it up to other people. There's a listener out now that's listening and, th- and there's a viewer that's watching and thinking that they, they're they scared to take a step. What's your tip to them? And as we close this up, what's that one tip from Alfonso um, of years of experience of investing, entrepreneurship, leadership. That's what we cover on yeah, this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, it could be anything, man, from any yeah. one of those three I'll, I'll say kind this. of topics. Every, everything that you want in life is at the other side of fear, right? If you feel scared, it's because it's it's something that is meaningful to you. And any time you've ever done something of any significance in your life, you felt that way. So, I like that, the, 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 yeah. that feeling in the stomach. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah. And, and so... Do it. I mean, this is, those are, if you feel fear, those are 
key indicators that you're on the right path. The only thing that can stop you now is yourself, right? So you just have to take a leap of faith and know and trust that on the other side is what you're looking for. And I'll tell you this, every single time, everything in life is at the other side of fear. Everything you've ever wanted in life is at the other side of fear. And you know, with my speaking, with my business, with everything that I've ever accomplished, I was always fearful of going in. And now I'm like, I can't believe, can you believe, I can't, I can't even believe, you know, I can't even fathom my life not being this way. So I was fearful, I'm still fearful. You know, sure, and 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 I'm fearful of a lot of things, but I now what I I do it anyways. I take a leap of faith and let's go. When I look at that skyline, that's mm-hmm. what I'm after. I, I want I want to be able. And by the way, you think the first time you go buy a building like that, you're not going to be fearful, oh, so, right? For sure. Yeah. So the bigger the fear, the better it gets. Oh. The better the reward. And I was just about to say, the better the return and the yeah, better the yeah, reward. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for still being a yes guy. Because when I when when I shot this at you and you were like, yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. I'm yeah. coming to Toronto. Thank you so much, guys. If you have not checked out my boy Alfonso's Instagram page and Facebook pages, you have to because like one of your last videos about showing the flip and allowing people to really see the inside of yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, that's amazing. So thank you for what you do, man. Really no, appreciate, I appreciate it. it. You know what? I appreciate you for doing this. Thank you, man. We talked. We talked about this. Is enough. I mean, you must have been fearful of doing all of this. Yeah, right? very. And yeah. Uh, I mean, to to have a set. I mean, you're not doing it on the, on the on the on a low budget. I mean, right. you have a set, yeah, and uh, you, you got things, uh, props <laughs> that you bought from Amazon, <laughs> yeah. and so at the end of the day, you have invested in into this, and this is why you're getting the results that you're getting because you believe in yourself. Thank you so and much. And so, what Alfonso. happens? People don't believe in themselves. People are real estate investors; they don't even have a business card. You have to be serious. I'll show you something. I'm going to give you my business card, mm-hmm. and I'm going to sh- you you tell me from if, if I'm serious just by holding it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Right? So you got to invest in yourself. For sure. You got to invest in yourself, right? And so this is why the people who are successful, people that have podcasts, people that have anything in in life is because they invest in themselves and their business. And better than buying a whole bunch of junk, invest in yourself, invest in your personal development, invest in your education, invest in, in coaching, invest in, in, in putting together podcasts, put in the money. I mean, this, this mic wasn't cheap. No. This is a serious mic. Yeah. So you're, you, you're, you're serious about it. This is why people will take you seriously because you're serious about what you're doing. I, re- I can't tell you how much I appreciate you noticing that because I knew I needed to get serious mics to get serious people. Yeah. Right? Because if I just had, as we started and the viewers see the mics behind us, yeah. you know, there's one behind uh, your left shoulder there as well, that at that time it was just me. Yeah. You know, and we had Laura uh, and then Simeon would join us, but it was just one little mic. Once we started to bring the more mics and the more cameras, more serious people started to yeah. come into our lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's why we, we, yeah. we started talking, all of our past guests. And so, I, I, how many listeners? We're, we're syndicated right across North America now with uh, approximately 150,000 listeners weekly. Yeah. And it was really just a dream. It was yeah. like, you know what, let's turn on the mic and yeah. kind of shoot the breeze on, on, on tips on real estate. Yeah. Then it changed. Changed uh, for season two, and we were like, you know what? Our real passion is entrepreneurship. We like to meet entrepreneurs and hear their story. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. why guys like yourself came on. Yeah, and so thank you again so much, Alfonso, for My doing man. this, man. I can't. I appreciate you how much what I appreciate. you're doing. I appreciate thank you, you Love a lot, you, brother. And uh, sure. you know what? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm willing to come back anytime. Oh, I, we would love to have you. I think we just, uh, uh, you know, scratched the surface today in today's conversation. Guys, make sure, click below all the links, get to Alfonso. As he said, he's looking for J- J- JV partners, so <laughs> get at him. 